My limit switches are fully installed. I'll demonstrate configuring the software today and test them out and show you why you want those hard limit switches on your CNC. For simplicity and filming purposes, I've just got a piece of shielded cable. It's easier to show it this way than to actually crawl under my machine. I've peeled away the insulating layer on the outside and you see the, the foil layer that's providing the shielding. And then here's a couple extra wires. We're only gonna be using two wires. We're gonna be using a red wire and a black wire because one will go to ground on our limit switch and the other one will be hooked to the middle pin of our limit switch. And then this will eventually go to a digital pin on our Arduino. If you're gonna be doing it for the X axis, it'll go to pin number nine. If you're gonna do it for the Y axis, it'll go to pin number 10. If you're gonna do it for the Z, it'll go to pin number 12. I'm gonna go ahead and just strip off the ends of these wires, probably maybe a, a centimeter, centimeter and a half. And then here's my limit switch. I personally like limit switches that you can get the disconnects on. And if you order them, you can buy them with these wires and they're already pre-crimped with these connectors. If you saw my last video on this particular model, the ground is where this lever comes down. So this is my ground pin on my Arduino that will eventually go to my ground on my Arduino, I should say. And I'm gonna hook it to that leg of the limit switch. And then the middle one, is going to go out as my signal pin. So we have our two wires here. Typically, people would solder on directly onto this, and that's fine, you can certainly do that. But once again, I like to be able to disconnect. So is there an easy way to do it without just soldering on here because that kind of defeats the whole purpose? And the answer is yes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the wires and we're gonna line them up and we're gonna twist them together. If you use pincher nose pliers, you can get a tighter a tighter twist, just a hint. So if you're having trouble gripping it, pincher nose pliers are better and it also would keep any oil off your fingers from getting on those wires. And we're gonna do the same thing for this other side of this limit switch. And I would do this actually after the limit switch is actually mounted on the CNC. But for filming purposes, you can see the process. So I have those twisted together. We need a good connector. Here's a strange use of a ferrule. You've seen this in an earlier video, but on Amazon, you can get these connectors with the crimping tool for around 25, 30 bucks. I really, really like these. I don't think I could go back to putting wires together without them. And I'm gonna be using for this particular application, the 18 gauge connector, which in this case is a small red. There's a large red and a small red. You want the smallest, diameter that you can actually take the twisted wire and get it up inside the metal. So we're going to do that and you can see that I was able and that's why we needed a fair amount of wire to make sure that we're well up inside. And then we just put the metal part in and we crimp down. We're not crimping in the plastic, we're crimping in the metal. And if it's a good connection, it should hold tight. Then we're going to wrap that with electrical tape and we now have a connector that we can take apart and yet we have a solid connection. And we're gonna do the same thing for this other side. Ideally, you would have one of the small black ones. This is a little bit big, the black, so even though I prefer to keep the color code the same, I'd rather have a tight connection and then just wrap it with black electrical tape to keep everything straight. So once again, put that on. We have a solid connection. And that very, very quickly, we now have a really great hookup and just wrap with electrical tape so that these don't touch. If they touch, that's gonna short. Then it's just a matter of mounting your limit switch so that you have your axes collide at the max distance that it can move. There's screw holes in the limit switches to do that. It's fairly straightforward on the X axis. On the Y axis, I actually have it down here so that the ball nut housing hits. If I, I ran a separate wire for each one of my limit switches. So I ran one for my X min and I ran one for my X max. Then I took the two wires together and the red wire that's coming off of this one and the red wire that'd be coming off of the other one, I brought together and I twisted and I put that into pin number nine of my 
Arduino screw terminals. And then the black wires, I went ahead and brought them both together and I crimped on one of these ferrules and I put it into a connector that looks like this. I twisted them together and I hooked them into this connector. I did the same thing for my Y. I ran two separate shielded cables, one for my Y Max and one for my Y Min. Then I took the leads that are coming off the center pin, I twisted them together and I put it into pin number 10 of my Arduino, twisted together, and then I took the ground from each one of those that are coming off of my Y Max and Y my Min. I twisted them together, I crimped on a ferrule, and then I put it on this rail that's hooked to the ground. And that still gives me two more slots that I could put in additional grounds. So if I wanted to run my limit switches for my Z axis, I could do that and I would still have a slot. And then I still have one more ground pin. So this is a way to extend your grounds, which is one of the big challenges of hooking up your limit switches. I want to show you how to configure it inside G-Sender. G-Sender is an open source program that will allow you to control your CNC. The first time you configure something for your limit switches, it can be a bit confusing and there's a couple little bugs that you should be aware of that can really throw you for a loop if you're not familiar with what's going on. So step number one is take your USB cable and go ahead and hook it into your computer. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 400, connect to the machine. So it's connected to my Arduino. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here on the right hand side where it says firmware and where it says firmware we're going to click on that and we're going to go change two settings inside this firmware. This is what's internal in the EEPROM memory of your Arduino that stays permanent whether your computer is plugged in or not. So essentially we're writing in some instructions that will always be there and that's what this firmware configuration is all about. Specifically, dollar sign five and dollar sign 21 are the ones that we need to have set to the right settings. So right now I have invert limit pins set to disabled. I'm gonna click that over to enabled. Then I'm gonna go down to dollar sign number 21, which is hard limits enable, and we want to enable that as well. So literally it's that easy. And then we have to do one more thing. We have to click apply new settings, otherwise it's not going to flash onto our Arduino. So we're going to hit apply new settings, go to the top X inside the box, click on it. Technically, G-Sender still thinks the old configuration is live, so we need to go over to this left hand side, this will only be once here, we're going to disconnect and we're going to come back in, and when we do, we're going to get an alarm code. I've connected and you see this alarm homing signal is coming up on my screen. That's normal. The first time it's sensing a voltage change inside those uh, pins. And all you have to do is you're going to come over here on this left hand side and click unlock. And anytime you log into G Sender the very first time with the settings that we have, you're going to have to go over and find that lock and unlock it your machine. The next thing we're going to do is we want to manually check these limit switches. I have four limit switches set up. I've got one for the far extreme of my X on the left side and the right side. And then I've got one on the far extreme of my Y on the, the front side and the back side of my CNC. I did not put any limit switches on the Z. I prefer to do that with uh, a probe when I set my heights or to manually do it with a playing card or a little piece of paper. So with that being said, let me just show you these being triggered. And I would recommend you always do this before you like try to ram your CNC deliberately into the side. So I'm going to press my one on my far side of my X. And when I do, you can see that sure enough, it triggered an alarm code, which is what we'd expect. And this time we're going to click on this unlock right there. I'm going to go ahead and press my limit switch on the right and you can see that it triggered as well. I'll press my limit switch down here in the front and it triggered. And then finally I'll hit it in the back and it triggered. That's exactly the way this should work. I want to show you what this is going to look like when you go in Fresh. So I'm going to exit G Center for the moment. 
I'm going to come back over here to the left hand side and I'm going to just start up the program. And because we have already flashed on those firmware changes onto, into our EEPROM memory of the Arduino, the, whenever you come in, instead of being an error-free screen, uh, what you're going to find when we connect our machine, so I'm going to connect my Arduino, and you're going to get that homing. So that is normal. Click on the lock to unlock it. Now let's go ahead and test this, and this time we're going to use the jog controls, and we're going to deliberately hit the left side of my X, my right side of my X, the front side of my Y, and the back side. That is to simulate that you have something going wrong with your CNC where you accidentally sent in G-code that took it off the axes. This is not something we're going to normally do. It's a safety precaution. So we're just checking to see how well this works. So, oops, better turn on my CNC. And now I'm moving it to the left. And you can see it stopped the machine. I have to unlock it. This is a little strange because the switch does not release at exactly the same moment. I'm going to go the opposite direction. And when I go the opposite direction, the switch is going to let up and there's going to be a little voltage spike and it's going to hit one more error. So I'm going to go to the right. The switch, you can literally hear it unclicking. I'm not sure if it's picking up on the video, but you're going to have to click unlock one more time and then we're ready to roll again. It will trigger one way as it's being pressed and it will back off the other way. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to hit the other axes. So I'm going to go all the way to the right hand side and slam my CNC into the far side of my CNC. And I'm not even looking at it, but I trust that that switch is going to work. So, and sure enough, it came up. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to go back the other direction and we'd expect as we go back, it's going to let up on that switch and it will throw another error. It did. Click it. And then I'm going to just bring it out in the center of my bed. Now let's go check my Y. So I'm going to check to the front side with my platform. And you can see it triggered. And now I'm going to back off and we'll hit an error. And now I'm going to go to the other side. Like the unlock machine. It's that easy. When you do this, here's a couple bugs. One, remember to reconnect the first time on your G Center software, or it's not going to appear to be working. The second thing is when you come off the edge, expect to have that little glitch. We did wire this so that it was normally open, meaning the circuit closes when the switch is pressed, which is great. But in the event one of the wires ever got snapped, when that switch is pressed, if the wires broke, it's never going to close. And so that's when this could fail. So that's why some people like to wire these instead of normally open, they wire them normally closed. If you enjoyed this video, if you could hit like or leave a comment, I would really, really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, that would be awesome. Let me give you a, a few departing tips that could really, really help you out. When you're running your shielded cable, don't try to just cut exactly the amount, have some extra. And that way, if in the future you ever wanna extend one of these axes by buying a longer ball screw or, and rails, then you can do that and then you don't have to splice in extra shielded cable and or just run a fresh piece. Zip ties are a really, really, really handy thing in trying to manage these cables that are going every which way. A third principle is when you run your shielded cables, if you can try not to have the shielded cable run directly next to a main power that is pushing power to one of your stepper motors, that will greatly increase the chances of uh, you not getting a corrupt signal. The shielded cable does an amazing job and you're probably never gonna have an issue, but why push your luck? If you can route it away from it, go ahead and do that. The next thing is, I'm gonna show you some pictures of my different axes of my CNC, starting with my X-axis. 
So right in here is my x-axis and you can see that I put a platform across the Y gantry. I just put a board there that I could mount my limit switch on and then I put a little board in the front. That's just to make it look cosmetically pleasing from the front side. It's the front that I don't want to see a bunch of wires every which way. As I put an emergency on off switch, I think that is definitely worth the money because if something goes haywire and you just want to like kill your machine, you can slam down on that in a moment's notice. Highly recommend it. The next is my front of my Y that you see here. You can see that I shimmed it up with a block so that it hits the ball net housing. I didn't know whenever you set up these limit switches, always, always, always maximize the full run as much as you can of your rail slash ball screw. This next limit switch, this is on the other side, of my X axis. You can see that I just mounted a board on the side. The back side, if you go a little further, you can see my Y limit switch on the back side. And you can note that I mounted that limit switch right on top of my hold down for my stepper motor. And then finally on the far side, I went ahead and fixed a power cord that is fused with 15 amps. That will provide additional protection. That way I can plug my router into that and I can plug my cord for my main CNC power supply into it and know that I'm fused. Hopefully all that was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.